enlightening our lives and showing us the proper way. So if you're living with the times, making sure your daily life's divine, yeah, you gotta watch Rabbi Benny's Torah videos today. You know, the current political situation in Israel Benny, is... Benny, can you come here for a second, please? Okay. Give me one second. All right. <laughs> she just wanted me to go see something. <laughs> hey! Welcome to the Kabbalah Jewish Center's video blog, the Torah portion of Vayikra. As the holiday of Passover is less than two weeks away, our Pesach cleaning frenzy has already gotten underway. We're cleaning and scrubbing the entire house to remove it from all unleavened substances. Uh, copy many. Here, I have some crumbs under me. Anyways, this week we begin the third of the five books, Leviticus. It discusses the sacrifices that the Jewish people brought while the tabernacle and the subsequent temples in Jerusalem were standing. The Torah portion speaks about the different voluntary sacrifices that one was able to offer to God, as well as some of the mandatory ones that a person had to bring when committing different types of sins. Betty, don't use the word sacrifice. It scares people. <laughs> Agreed. In fact, to be quite honest, it scares me. Sacrifice. It doesn't just hear Hearing the word sacrifice make you visualize images of people dressed in loincloths, dancing around bonfires, and ululating. What? what? What do you think you were gonna see? I don't wanna lose my job. Anyways, uh, yeah, where were we? Right, sacrifices. They seem so outdated and ancient. How on earth can we possibly relate to them? How can the Torah, which speaks so elaborately of the sacrifices in the temple, possibly have any relevance to our lives in the 21st century? Well, let's at least examine for a minute some of the details associated with these sacrifices. The Hebrew name for sacrifices isn't quite as intimidating as the English word. It's korban, which means getting close. The sacrifice was the way a person would display his love for God and his desire to be close to him. So when the guy wanted to express his love for God or beg for his pardon and forgiveness, he would take his most prized animal possession and bring it up to the temple in Jerusalem, where the animal would then be slaughtered and burned on the altar as a korban. Yo, Jerry. Hey, it's Benny. How you doing? Listen, I'm bringing a sacrifice this afternoon. We plan on throwing some juicy steaks on at a grill after at the temple. Hanky and Georgie are coming. You in? No, the sacrifice wasn't some giant tailgate party in Jerusalem. It was actually a very spiritual moment. The Levites chanted spiritual melodies. The priests meditated on Kabbalistic stuff. And for the one who brought the sacrifice, he watched everything happen, imagining that it was he himself who was being elevated and consumed in these fires of holiness. And this part of the sacrifice applies nowadays just as back then. <laughs> No, not in that way. Hasidic philosophy teaches that every person is the owner of an animal. Here, Schnorky, Schnorky! Here, Schnorky! Schnorky! No, it's the animal soul that dwells within everyone. This soul, like an animal, is not quite interested in becoming better and closer to God. It has a different agenda. One that keeps its hearty appetite fed and continuously pursues the physical and emotional pleasures that life has to offer. This animalistic way of life is ultimately a selfish, self-centered one. It only pursues that which will benefit itself. To serve a higher purpose and give of oneself, that doesn't excite the animal soul. Some people have animal souls that are calm and passive, like sheep. <coughs> While the animal souls of others may be more similar to out of control raging bulls. <coughs> To bring a sacrifice nowadays means taking that selfish animal within us and filling it with a burning love for God, allowing it to be consumed in divinity and godly pursuits. So this week, God expects every human being not just to tame the animal within, but to transform it so that it too can be filled with a love for godliness and a passionate desire to fulfill His will. To do that, we must sacrifice the selfish part of us, even if they're tiny changes in life. If they make us groan just a little, leaving our comfort zones for a while, then we have truly lived the sacrificial experience. In your life, make one effort to change a tiny little animalistic behavior that you may have. 
and you will have come close to God and help make your surroundings into an everlasting home for His infinite presence. Shabbat Shalom and have a great week.